Oh, what a palaver. Hopefully I'm sorted now. A few things have happened over the last 12, 30, 40, 50, 16 hours. I was coming home from work yesterday and I decided I would test out my battery, have a look at it, because I've connected up I've connected up my Oximizer connection, but I've never plugged in the Oximizer itself. So I parked at home uh, just outside my front door, uh, but there's cars parked on the opposite side of the road, and it's only a small little driveway. Fucking dick. 30 miles an hour. Anyway, there's cars parked on the other side of the road. So I needed to park close to stroke on the pavement. So, she's fucking gone, thank God. a little bit of filtering here. So I parked up on, on the pavement and pulled my I have got stuck there And I pulled my side stand down and put the side stand down and the bike didn't seem to want it at all. It was a bit too upright. It was as if it wasn't the bike wasn't particularly safe in that position. Because there's a slight slant on the pavement. Like that. Not as much as that, but a slight one. So I pulled me side stand back up and put my centre stand down and that slight slant as I put the centre stand down the bike started toppling away from me towards the centre of the road oh shit I was going oh no grabbing it trying to put it back and, uh, just managed to save it from toppling over on the other side of me which I was really grateful for but my heart was pounding rather a lot so that was the first thing uh, I eventually got the bike safely safely on the side of the road parked up and I plugged in my oximizer and everything was perfectly alright. It was up at the top level of voltage and ampage or whatever it is. And it just went straight into maintenance mode. Uh, which means that everything's perfectly alright for it. Okay, but I thought, well, I've, I've had the bike a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll have a read of the little manual that you get with it. Because I haven't bothered so far. And it was telling me this, that and the other. 
Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Told me that I had a hazard switch on the bike, which I'd never noticed. It's right below my kill switch on the right hand side. I'd just never bloody noticed it. So I uh, had a little play with that. What am I doing? Um, I had a little play with that. And then read a bit more. Uh, coolant. Oh, all right. I had problems with the coolant with the Vespa. I'll have a, I'll have a check of the coolant. Um, and finding it in the first place where you check was a little bit of a difficulty in the first place. But when I eventually did find it, this little expansion hub down behind the chain it said that the coolant that's in there should be in between the minimum and the maximum levels. And there was this little sort of egg cup little bit right at the bottom which was like a reserve tank. Bit, or a reserve bit. And the amount of coolant in my bike was nowhere near the minimum mark. In fact, there was only a little bit in this little cup bit at the bottom. And I'm thinking, oh, what the bloody hell's going on here? Didn't they do it in the pre-drive inspection or whatever PDI stands for? Or what? And it was green coloured. A Honda green coloured coolant. So I'm going, oh, I don't have any of that. I've got loads of the pink stuff. I haven't got any of the green stuff. Uh, what do I do now? I had a few chats on WhatsApp to other people and the general consensus of opinion was you don't mix pink with green or yellow or blue because it produces a sludge and or a jelly-like substance and it can totally knacker up things within your engine. Okay, all right. So I'm not mixing it. I'm not going to use my already available pink coolant. I will think of something else. So I was looking for stuff um, and I noticed on the CB500X forum that uh, quite a few other people had had exactly the same problem. The coolant just bloody disappearing. So I'm starting to get a little bit concerned about this. But anyway, I sort of waited until the next morning, check this morning, and there wasn't a bloody drop in this expansion tank. Nothing! I'm looking, there's nothing there. Oh, bloody hell, what's going on? So I rang up my dealer, and he says, uh, there's absolutely no problem with putting in any type of coolant, as long as it's glycol based, ethylene glycol based um, and something about silicon free or something, I don't know um, for aluminium engines and, and he said yeah you can mix it's no, no problems at all with mixing and he was very confident about it and pretty much laughing at the idea that it produced a jelly substance but he did say that um, that was an issue with cars mixing coolant uh, because of something to do with their bearings in the car and uh, something to do with oil and engine oil or grease or something he said it's not an issue with motorbikes uh, so okay fine that's not an issue but I'm a bit concerned because everything else that I've read on the internet says you don't mix them so I didn't know who to believe or what to believe. So I then uh, rang up some other places and some places had never heard of green cooler. Uh, and they wouldn't know what to do. And I rang the local Honda dealer and he said, yeah, 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 let's just go check. Oh no, we seem to have had a run on it recently, so we've got none left. Okay. And then I rang up uh, a local bike shop in my town um, who used to be Honda dealers. 
And he basically said, yeah, he's never ever seen the green coolant, the Honda coolant. He's never managed to get hold of it. And he's only ever seen it in brand new bikes. Because that's what they come with, that's what they ship with. But you just can't and don't get them. Uh, get, get the stuff over here. Um, but he said what he always used, always had used, always mixed, was Castrol motorcycle coolant and in his 25 or 30 years he never had one issue, it doesn't glue up uh, in terms of mixing with it, he's always used the, the Castrol stuff and he says it's perfect for bikes and that's what he's always used, £5.85 for a bottle of pre-mixed, a litre of pre-mixed. So, being an ex-Honda dealer and this, I thought, wow, well, fine, it's blue, blue and green together, fine, no issues. Maybe the Honda stuff was blue and it just looks green once it's put in and you're looking at it through this expansion thing, I don't know. So I went and got some. Um, and I then said, all right, to actually get to the coolant, fill a cap, I'm going to need a hose or something. Otherwise, I've got to take off the whole of the side panel, which looks a bit of a pain in the arse, so I don't really want to do it. I don't really have the time. And he said, well, yeah, we don't have any hoses. You can go get them from here, there, or everywhere. Um, and good luck with that. It's an idea. But with most bikes now, you need to take off the fairing uh, because they make it a right pain in the arse and I guess that's because they want Honda dealers to be able to get some money out of being screwed over by Honda for being one of their dealers but he then said that the bottle that I was just getting has one of these nozzles in it you pull you pull the whole thing upwards and it produces a, a long thin nozzle, just like a hose. Not oh, right, okay, that might work. And it does! Absolutely perfect! I can get through to my radiator fill cap brilliantly with this little nozzle that is already installed within the Castrol coolant bottle. So I've topped up not filled up top top and I'm much happier now and I'll give it a bit of a check once I get to work I'm only two hours late for work but I prefer to get there than wreck my bike and not make it for the day and to be in a very very upset mood for quite a quite a quite a long time Anyway, that's it for me. That was quite a long ramble for me. So that'll do. Bye-bye.